Welcome to the 20 Podcast, bringing you interviews with the best DJs, producers, and music industry professionals from around the globe. I'm your host, DJ Spider. DJ Spider! That's right. Thank you guys for rocking with me. What is going on, my beat sorcerers? How you feeling? What's up? What's up? What's up? Everything good? Headed into the holidays. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Um, this podcast as always is brought to you by the amazing beat source that's right head over to beatsource.com sign up you get a free trial beat source streaming is like nothing else on the earth okay it's integrated into hardware software and you can dj off the cloud i actually have a good example of somebody losing their computer okay don't judge this person but this happened to them and they had a big gig the next day they ended up just loading up all the crates and the things they had saved virtually and did the gig. Boom. Didn't even have to worry about losing the computer or the music. So that's not why you should get it, but that's one problem that's been solved, guys. We also have songs no other record pools have. We have custom curated playlists that are incredible, edits, and all types of stuff. It's the future. Go check it. Beatsource.com. Now, let's talk about our guest of the day. Today on the show, we have a really dope producer, DJ, someone that can do it all, someone I've been friends with for a long time. I think we realized on this episode, it might be up to almost 20 years I've known this person. Um, And I've always had the utmost respect for him, um, his skills, his hustle, and just everything about him. He's a great dude. Um, He was on the show once before, but it was like March 17th, 2020. It was our first episode during the pandemic. It was like... We had been told to stay in our house that week and did not know what to do. I didn't want to kill the podcast, so we kept it going. But when we recorded it, it's horrible video, horrible audio. We still did it, but for everybody that couldn't sit through all the bad audio, you this episode will make it up, okay? We'll make it up to you, and you'll hear everything. We'll even go over some of the things we went over on that show. But so much has changed. So much has happened in, in his life that um, it's amazing to have him back on and hear all the changes and all the new projects that he's working on. Um, he's put out a debut album. Uh, Twilight Nine. He's changed his music style a bit. He's become an avid golfer and gotten involved in projects in that space, um, composing theme songs for golf podcasts and doing all types of stuff. Um, He's opened an amazing pizza shop with his brother and so much more. I mean, he tells us all the things he's worked on, working on, and all the stuff in the future as well. It's a lot, and and it doesn't surprise me coming from this guy. Uh, we also discuss his past as a scratch DJ, a hip hop touring DJ, an open format club DJ, winner of Master of the Mix, his group with Red Man, and so much more. I think this will be inspirational to you guys. Um, a lot of open format DJs that want to learn about transitioning into becoming an artist or a producer or different things and making moves and, and doing that thing. So I would like to welcome to the show, JCO. It's the 20 podcast. We're here live in person. Okay. Much different from last time with JCO. Give it up. Yeah. Yeah. Bo, 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 bo. Up, Doc? What up? Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you too. Um, I don't know if you guys missed the last podcast, but uh, JCO was the first guest of the pandemic <laughs> and I had blanked, like blacked it out of my memory, like the entire podcast, yeah. because I listened, I was telling you, I listened last night just to kind of get an idea of what we talked about. And right. yeah, it was like March 17th, 2020. And we had the, it was horrible audio. So anyone that did listen, you know, you'll know, but I think we'll recap some of it on this one. So cool. people can hear the high be quality. Back. Yeah. I'm happy you're here and happy you got to come to the office and check it out. Yeah, man, it's dope. Um, but um, yeah, it was uh, it was like we recorded a time capsule back then because we yeah. were trying to predict the future and we, we were like, "This is crazy. What's gonna happen, man?" I think we predicted it, right? We did, kind of. <laughs> yeah, we nailed it in a way. You were <laughs> like, "I will have a pizza shop and uh, <laughs> I will start golfing much more, and golf will become a huge thing and become." Uh, Malbon will blow up and become the supreme of golf. You already know, baby. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Killing it. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so that was crazy. But no, I'm so we've been talking about it. I'm glad to have you back. And it's perfect yeah. timing because you have done so much since then. Like we did not predict the future in the sense that yeah. you know, you would almost change a lot of the like musical styles of yeah. the stuff you were working on. Like yeah. I I was writing down questions and, you know, doing ideas last night. I listened to your whole album. Awesome. Um all the way through. And that's awesome. Man. It's a vibe, bro. No, yeah. but it really is. Like yeah. it was such a good um I, I think I tried to write down what I thought and I, I'm not seeing it, but I can tell you what I really think <laughs> um, was it was just like, yeah, it was really dope. I could tell it, it encapsulated your love of just like all types of music. Yeah. You know, I mean, it had elements of dub in the sense of not necessarily dubstep, but like right. dub reggae, yeah. but mixed with hip hop, but mixed with the bass and the hard drums yeah. and the funky shit. But yeah. then like the first two songs give you like that. I don't know, like you're on an island vibe, right. but yeah. like you're feeling good. But then you get a little bit harder as you yeah. go into the third song. Yeah. And then you hit that like G funk, yeah. almost Tupac yeah. vocal sounding Picture song. Me rolling. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah. That song is dope. Yeah. Um, I just did this golf event for Netflix and I pitched them to license it, yeah. but they ended up not licensing it. Sorry, Netflix, I quit. Um, but no, I was like, <laughs> you guys should put this in, you know, yeah, yeah, um, for sure. But, uh, but yeah, it's dope. Really, really Appreciate good. That. I'm so glad to hear you able to kind of express your musical sound yeah. and what came out of the pandemic, I guess. Right. Yeah. No, I started all like, so I just released my debut album. Yeah. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. I mean, you've after been putting music out forever. For years and years, but it's always been just kind of single of this, single of that, EP yeah. here, EP there. This is my first like full like body of work. Yeah. I'm like this. And it's this, called Twilight Nine. Yeah, so it's so called Twilight know. Nine. It's a nine song album. Um, and it's really just like me, the songs I started during the pandemic that just kind of just came out of me. Like I was making music like yeah. without the intention of any crowd or show or festival because they weren't right. happening. Yeah. And I was like, let me just like a sharpen up my skills as a producer and like anything I was weak at, I would just like take the time because I had so much time and just right. like teach myself stuff to a point where like getting out ideas and whatever came to me wasn't, there was no like technical holdbacks, yeah. you know, so I could just kind of like let ideas come out and it just turned out to be some of the most like unique, organic, just like dope shit that I've ever made, you know? Yeah. Cause like I've been putting out records for years and like, you know, us as like coming from a DJing background, like we know, you know, what people want and like what's hot. Right. So like initially as a producer, I was like making edits and remixes and then, when I started making originals, you know, you're trying to chase that, that sound or yeah. that record that'll fit in the club. Right. With what's, what's hitting, you know? Um, but like kind of just stepping away from like trying to have people please and just like please myself as like a creative and just make something dope. And that's, that's what that album is. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And that's usually yeah. the best thing you tap into what's genuine to you. Yeah. And, and it's been hard. Cause I've always like, you know, Anytime I make a song, I'm like, all right, this needs to be at this club at this time. You know what I'm right. saying? And just like picture that where this album is more of like a listening album. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, like I do want to do shows around this album, but it's got to be more in like an artist setting. You know what I'm right. saying? You know, some more live because there's a lot of like live instrumentation. Well, the vocals the are super dope too. If you brought yeah. out some of those That's people what I'm and did it live. Like yeah, like that could be a really dope live show. But like obviously, you know, that side of the game, the artists and show and hard yeah. ticket selling side of things is much, is a much more difficult thing to, to enter, maintain yeah. and retain, you know? So, you know, that side of it, I'm trying to, you know, get back to where I was pre pandemic when I was yeah. like bus tours and festivals and all that. But like with this whole new sound, you know, I kind of had to like, I rebranded myself and just made myself more of a welcoming you yeah. know, person instead of just like the heavy dubstep guy, you know, like that's just not right. my shit anymore. So, you know, just trying to open up my sound to a wider audience and just like cast a wider net of music that like more people can appreciate than just like just bangers for bangers, you know? Yes. Yeah. I could tell totally. And it was a perfect listening album for me to even to be doing research and writing questions yeah. and chilling and going around my house and yeah. you know no i wanted to make it just something you could just put on and, and just rock you know yeah. it's not like because a lot of you know these dance club records it's like in the club you're like you want to hear it but like you do not want to hear that no. outside of the club no you know what i'm saying i wanted to make you know just songs that resonate with people like 
Yeah, and they're fun time. and they're yeah. DJ centric too. Like the picture yeah. me rolling is like fun yeah. to scratch to yeah, and yeah. play. You know, yeah, yeah. if I if I'm playing an event that's not like the super banging, you know, yeah, like yeah. thing, I can be playing and people are like, oh, what is yeah. this? You know, yeah. it sounds dope. Yeah. Um. So yeah, good job. Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to drop. Uh, well, I've been. I just started rolling out a whole like remix album of the album. Oh, um, nice. So there's like I heard the Lit Lords one. Yeah, the Lit Lords one with Sammy Adams. Um, yeah, and Sammy Adams yeah. sounds dope on it. Yeah, he's he's sick, bro. Like yeah. me and him, we came up together. We used to do bus tours, and right. I was with him when he got signed to RCA initially, and we got a crazy history. So when I was making this album, I just I had that beat, and I was like, I should get Sammy on this. Yeah. Shit. And he just knocked it out. And yeah, he did. You know, we work really well together. Just that, even just doing that song is spark. Like all of his fans are like commenting on pose and like, yo, That's like great. bring it, bring it back. Like Sammy JCO was a key. Like yeah. all this shit. Like they wanted to do like, cause I produced like two mixtapes for him back in the day. Right. And they're like into the wild too. Like you gotta do it. I'm I like, mean, you might have to. <laughs> I mean, I got enough beats. Like I'm like, right. I'm just sending them to Sammy. He's just got to write, you know? Yeah. So, and I know you had the group with Redman. Are you guys still doing that, or did that change from the pandemic? I mean, or? the pandemic, you know, as everything did, just kind of was a full reset on things just in terms of the momentum. Because, like, me, right. And, right before the pandemic, me and Redman just dropped an EP on Deadbeats, Zed Zed's label. We just did right. two big-ass festivals in Canada. Like, things were, like, really yeah. looking up. And then, obviously, everything stopped. And then, you know, I rebranded Redman was going through some family stuff. Right. Um, but we still, we're st like, he has a whole folder of new beats. So we're working on the next album. That, that's great. So that's going to come back. And I feel like it might even be more genuine to you guys yeah. than trying to do the, if you're not doing the like big party or you could do the, the big party nah. stuff in a different sound or something. Nah, like I'm still doing like party shit. Like, of don't, course. Don't get me twisted. But not the exact dubstep. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I'm not going heavy, heavy dubstep. You right. Know what I'm saying like, yeah. I want the next thousand volts project to like red man, OG fans can hear it and be like, all right, I rock with this versus yeah. like the the first project was like the verses they're like, all right, I'm rocking this and the drop comes to like, what the fuck is going <laughs> on? You know? Right. And I've heard you saying like on other podcasts that like some of the younger kids don't even know who Red Man exactly. was. And so it was just like a Yeah. You had to find that. But no, nah, just me, just as a person as an artist, I'm just way more focused and on like what things need to be and how yeah. they should roll out. And I just think the the next album with me and Redman is just going to be like just way better and just yeah. tighter the rollout, the team behind it and just like really do it the right way. You right. Know? Cause like the fact that that I have a fucking group with red man, <laughs> like mean, it's like, how, how did that not like blow the that's fuck definitely up? Just like, the gate, uh, you know what I'm saying? Bucket list beyond bucket list dream come true type thing. Oh, you bro. know I mean? We red, both came yeah. up as kind of hip hop DJs and that kind of thing. And that's something I don't think either of us, would have pictured even when we Bro. met like what 15 18 years ago or i don't even know yeah. we probably know each other I 18 20 years probably or something, right? yeah it's crazy point. yeah um, i had i remember i had uh like obviously muddy waters was like one of the first oh my god me like too. vinyl records i had i remember i had a there's a dark side poster just like in my room yeah and like i remember the first car i ever got was like my older brother ben chef osh was in college in Baltimore. I was in Pittsburgh still at the time. And like, he got a new car and my yeah. parents like, all right, you're gonna, you gotta go to Baltimore and pick up the car. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm getting a car. And I remember <laughs> driving this like weak ass Civic back from Baltimore to Pittsburgh. And like, I had just had like Dox the name or something just drop out. Like right. one of those albums just bummed it the whole way back. And I was just like, I fucking love Red Man. Yeah. And I'm saying like, how high is the best thing of all time. Oh yeah. You know? And his personality is just the best. It's always been from the original hip hop stuff to just the crazy when he got into, you yeah. know, that crib zone where he was just yeah. like the funny guy with Method Man. And like now he seems like he's just like living life, like skydiving yeah. and like yeah. doing crazy shit yeah. that I see online. And his personality is, is the same. Like you hanging out with him, doing whatever, like when we're running around doing yeah. whatever. It's just like you're in how high, like he's fucking cutting That's up, amazing. like cracking jokes at random people on the street. Just like, <laughs> it's just like fucking amazing. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's so dope. Um, 
Well, I guess uh, we can, you know, there's a lot of stuff you're doing now from the golf stuff to shout to Chef Osh, uh, Gorilla Pies, yeah. and all these things. Um, but why don't we recap your early days um, and go through that just so people that didn't hear the other episode can okay. get that. And then and then we can talk about all that. And um, I mean, because I feel like you have, I was trying to like remember just from being friends with you, all the stuff you've done. Then I was trying to do research so I didn't forget stuff. And right. I'm like. Jesus Christ, I know this guy does a lot, but um, <laughs> it's, been it's a endless. It almost sounds fake when you start I listing know. out all the shit that you've done. You know what <laughs> I mean? I was like, I'm like, okay, he's from Pittsburgh, but he's DJed for every Boston artist, and he's like a Boston guy, too. Yeah. And then he's also DJed for Wiz Khalifa and those people. And yeah. I mean, like, I was trying to, like, write it down. Like, then you were in New York City, then... Yeah. You were in LA and then you won Master of the Mix and then you yeah. became a producer touring artist. You were yeah. making songs with Morgan Page, super yeah. group with Redman, yeah. you know, all that stuff. So yeah, do you want to talk about kind of like coming up, like your early influences? Are you from Pittsburgh? Is no. that your place? You know this, bro. Come on, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? I do know, but I got confused bro, when I, I was up, looking. I know. It is it is confusing. I know you're from LA. Yeah, I was born in L.A. Okay. In eighth grade, I moved to Pittsburgh. Yes. And then I ended up going to Taylor Alderdice High School, which is where Taylor Gang and okay. like that whole That's why I'm was, saying from there, from. because yeah. I know you're from L.A. in right. the early part. And yeah. then up to like yeah. eighth grade. My but first then your notable, DJ from my, is like. Yeah, the year I moved to Pittsburgh <clears throat> that's what I meant. was the year I started DJing. Yes. Okay, that's kind of what I was saying. So, like, yeah, so in high school, came up just kind of super backpack rap, underground, yes. scratch DJ, just yeah. like you. Yes, you know? <laughs> same world. And then, uh, you know, went to college in Boston and started doing mixtapes and stuff. And then got on college radio. And I was like, what college was it? Uh, Emerson College. Okay, that's what and I thought. I, they had I, that dope station that you could like yeah, see out on the street. Yeah, no, it was like the number one like Princeton Review college. I know. College I wanted to go there. I remember station. looking at it like, this is crazy. Yeah, so I went there and I got on got on the show, which was super competitive. And then yeah. after a year, I became the the hip hop director. So like I was oh, dealing dope. with record labels. Wu Tang comes to town. I'm setting up the interviews, interviewing them. Yeah. House DJ at the show. Like that whole thing. That was thing. the way to get free records too at the time. Oh yeah. They would all Because I was in. the director at my thing. Yeah. And I'm like, let me get all every, the promos. They would send co <laughs> copies every other DJ. But yo, that so and so come in. I'm like, nah. And You're like, like, sorry, I don't I'm know. I'm gonna need doubles of that. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so then I was just, you know, running around Boston, you know, doing all that stuff in the hip hop scene there and then started touring with like Acrobatic and Ed OG yes, and yeah. all those type of rappers. And then um while I was running the radio station, I like my boys had signed uh this kid Wiz Khalifa who was still in high school. Um Benji Grimberg and Artie Pitt who started Rostrum Records. Right. I feel like yeah. the first time I heard of Wiz Khalifa was through you. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. And then uh I remember I like was the first DJ to play Wiz on the radio outside of Pittsburgh. Like while I was in college, I was like, I had him on this like I used to work at undergroundhiphop.com. Like, oh, yes. I did these, like, the ugg ug exclusive mixtapes where, like, we'd get exclusives from all the dopest, like, underground rappers. Yeah. Had, had him on that. And then, like, when he started blowing up, I, you know, did a string of shows with him. Right. Um. So there was all that. Fucking. And then Bonix got in the mix. Because I, I, yeah. I used to DJ in Pittsburgh all the time, and I would hang with Nugget and Zimmy and yeah. Bonix and... Bonix would take me to that Jerry's record spot. Yeah, that was right down the street from where I grew Legendary. up. Legendary. Like, I grew up digging on that shot. I was like, oh, this is just what a record shop is. Oh, my God. And then later like, in life, I'm, like, seeing documentaries about it. I'm like, what? This I is got like the coolest the shit there. It was yeah. like, you could spend all day and night in there. Like, it was yeah. insane. Pittsburgh was crazy. Yeah. And Boston shit. And yeah. Then, you know. And Boston kind of got you yeah. into the touring game. I mean, that was your first experience with actually being a touring DJ, even though you were the touring DJ for rappers. as a backup. You know, but yeah. but you got a taste of it and what yeah, it was I got like. a taste of that. Like, got to go to Europe pretty pretty early. Right. And, That's dope. And then you know, I started the. I was in New York, just kind of grinding it out. As right. A DJ. I remember going to New York yeah. and I would hit you up and I'd yeah. be out there and we'd hang. Yeah. And then I started while I was in New York the Super Seven mixtape series. Yes. Which featured like every DJ oh, of all time. So dope. Legendary. Almost. Just all the dopest shit. For those who don't know, I started this mixtape series. I don't even remember the year, but it was like probably maybe 15 years ago. Yeah, it has to but be. But the whole concept was just like everyone was making mixtapes. They're, you know, 80 minute CDs. Yeah. How do we fit the most amount of people? 10 minutes, give or take. Yeah. Seven DJs. I was like, me and six homies. Everyone does 10 minutes roughly. And it just took off, and that kind of catapulted my touring career just by the, based on, like, 
me putting out these kind of like quintessential of the time DJ mixes and DJ culture was right. so fucking popping at that time. And it was all the dopest DJs. Like if you look back yeah. at the list, you're just like, wait, what? How'd you get all these people yeah, to like even the fact I got take the time the to do fact that? I got DJ spiders. Like, wow. I mean, fucking I'm probably wow. the crowning achievement <laughs> on there, but everyone no. below me. Yeah. You so know, like, Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> way, way below. <laughs> uh, but like had, you know, Jazzy Jeff, Z trip revolution. Yeah. You know, that whole kind of, style of like you know scratch bass and right. like all those people like um, and how we came up with the true school solid djing and then as i progressed to be more of like a producer artist it was like you know i had like nightmare on there when you had like yeah five thousand followers favor. party yeah. favor tjr lucas bloody beat roots like big yeah big and it almost just became, like yeah yeah it's like the fact like i just brought it back actually um earlier this year I yeah did i saw volume 11. okay who was yeah, on Super that one? 7 11. Super Seven Eleven. Hey. <laughs> uh, who was on that? That was Big Gigantic, Flostradamus. Oh yeah. Okay. That was um dope. Okay. Gesture. John Casey. I hear so much about Gesture's DJ sets. Like everyone's always like, he has the dopest sets. I haven't been able to see he him. He throws down. He throws down. But it must be different than some other DJs because it's like that's always the feedback i'll get from things yeah, like, he just he throws down a fun set he's, he's right. all about just like booty shaking i'd love fun, to see it shit, yeah. i'm like i wonder what yeah he doing. throws a dope party called group chat like once okay. a month oh okay. um that he has like secret djs and uh whatnot nice out there dope and so oh man so okay so you put that out and then are you gonna keep doing it i mean it seems like an amazing yeah, brand no it, it's it was it seems like it could never die yeah i brought know? it back and yeah the plan is um you know start doing probably like to a year yeah bring it back because like because i had it pop in and then my managers at at that time right when i stopped doing they're like oh focus on this focus on that and i yeah. was just like in this fucking wormhole of <laughs> dubstep fuckery um right. and then like i just like you know over the pandemic and just this past couple of years of just kind of taking control of my whole situation you know just from you know how i'm gonna do shit how i'm putting shit into the world what i'm putting in out right when i'm putting it out you know and just do like, you still have some sort of team that you're working with in terms yeah. of booking agent manager or um any of yeah that? i have a, a homie who's helping me out on the management side okay on a bunch of stuff but like really the bulk of it is just me right, right. now like i just been like because i put out this album and i have a ton of stuff like rolling out and um i was with some agencies before that just you know weren't really doing much for me so like yeah. i was like i'm way more effective just like like I've done so much in my career and traveled to all these places, like reaching out to people and kind of like making connections or not making connections, just like, you know, yeah, hitting people up and just be like, yo, like what's good. And like most times when I hit people up, they're like, fuck yeah, we'd love to have you win before. Yeah. I'm, you know, banking on someone else doing that same thing to all these different outlets. And it's like, who the fuck knows how many people they called or how hard right. they tried. Yeah. You know, so just taking control of shit to like my, like, all my songs and records and just like all my shit is built back up to get again yeah, to yeah. where like a real boss ass you know asian is just gonna come in and just make it happen but yeah. for now like i'm fucking humble and just grinding my dick off you know <laughs> yeah. making shit happen but it's like things are really moving and it's like how i want to do it you know that's so dope. it feels a lot more like gratifying you yeah know? that's great and i mean <clears throat> you you know that <clears throat> excuse me uh <laughs> you you know that better than anybody like <clears throat> sorry we can edit that part I'm, uh nah, keep it in keep it in. um no you know that better than anybody you know like you've always been a hustler for your own thing but also right. known how to you know approach the different sides of the business as an yeah. open format dj or whatever you call yeah. it you know a hip-hop dj open format dj club dj yeah. um but then transitioning into literally having a manager and a booking agent and a lawyer yeah. and like all yeah. the stuff that yeah. anybody up to a Calvin Harris or somebody would yeah. have, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think you understand all sides of it and when things are needed and what's not. And yeah. So a lot of times I'm like, I can slow down the process and have someone handle this for me or I'm yeah. fucking on it and I can handle it right now. You yeah. Know? So that's just kind of the mode I I'm know. On. Um, but it's good. It's kind of like freeing a bit. Cause I would always be like, in this kind of constant state of panic. Like is, is this manager going to do this for me or is this agent reaching out to these people? Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on. Cause I'm not in the email thread and just like, 
living in that state of not knowing is like, I know. it's not a good place to be. <laughs> you know? So I'm just like no. doing whatever I can to not yeah. be in that place just for my mental and just for my, just like being able to just do dope shit and have yeah. fun. No, that that's makes what, sense. Yeah. But that's also why I'm kind of, I've been like coming back to club DJing and just like a bit of more open format stuff. Cause like, that's how I came up. Like, that's what I, right. that's my bread and butter. And like, I've completely ne neglected that to like fit in this kind of EDM mold for so long. Right. Which is like, that shit's cool. And I still exist in that world and can't do that shit. But it's like the fact that like, if I have a couple, you know, weekends off, like, why am I not going out to play some fun ass club and ripping it? Cause like, that's what I'm good at. You totally. know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I'm just been leaving so much money on the table over the years that I'm just like recently been like, fuck it. Like yeah. if it's like the money's right and it's a fun club, like I'll come do whatever, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. I'm not, I'm not like, as picky about it. Yeah. You would, you would kill it like yeah. in any sort of situation. Right. You just know, like musically. as long as I'm in a good, good position to win, like I'll just go and right. do it just like you, you know? And then you get all these random gigs where like we got a yeah. 70s theme party or fucking oh whatever. God. And then you'll, you know, you're like me. We spend the time and go crazy and prepare our sets. So when we get to these things, we fucking kill it. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're we're definitely hiring you next year. You know, it's yeah. like doing the, the work ahead of time to like get hired again is like such an important thing. Right. Which I think I applaud you so much. Like over the years, you know, you've Thanks. been able to maintain this whole like you know, all these crazy private events and club gigs that over the years, people just like fuck with you. Cause you know, you do a good job and you're a good person. You, yeah. You know? it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And try to like always, you know, you should definitely, definitely use that clip of me giving you props for, uh, I'm, I'm going to just loop it in yeah. my house yeah. and just like give myself <laughs> motivation. Hey Alexa, play JCO. <laughs> play JCO. Uh, <laughs> give me props. Thank you. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, you know, I don't, people, when they ask questions, like I don't, there's no silver bullet answer or way to do it. But like you said, I just, I'd rather put in way too much work and have it not be used yeah. than not put in that much yeah. work and then feel like I'm underprepared. Yeah. You like know? when you're at a gig and you're like in a certain moment, you're like, I don't know what to do right now. Oh, that's, that's the, the worst, worst feeling in the fucking world. <laughs> yeah. Although the amount of time, like at home when you're feeling almost that same pressure, you're like, I don't know what, what I would do after this. Like, what I am I going to do? You like searching for songs and shit, but you know, you know, but that's just what we're used to. You know, that's, yeah. that's like the preparation process. I know it is funny. Like, cause I feel like I'm soup. My whole family always says about me, like I'm so indecisive and it takes me forever to make yeah. a decision before we started. I'm like, I don't know what to do about yeah. this and that. But DJing is all about just making instant decisions. Yeah. And for some reason, when I'm in the, zone of like the pressure i can like decide shit really fast yeah. and like but, like but, do it but, but when i'm not it's like i'm overthinking the shit out of it i know like <laughs> it's the I'll pressure spend, i'll spend five hours working on a one hour set and yeah. i'll get there I'm like i could have totally just fucking freestyle if this. you were in front you of people you would have done it and people yeah. would have been like oh my god i yeah. can't believe you did that yeah. like i know so same shit i mean it, it you know, it was like that golf thing I did last week. Like you, you loaned me a shirt for it. Thank you. Mal, shout you to didn't Malbon. Wear. I know. I'm sorry. Shout to Malbon Golf, the plug. <laughs> um, but but I, uh, oh my God, talk about over preparing yeah, and then not using it. You know, yeah. it was like, how was that, man? It was super dope. Um, it, it was amazing. You know, but it was like I heard Bert Kreischer gave you a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, well, you know, what's funny was that he came up for the. Um, like rehearsal, like I ended yeah. up going a day early. And right. so we're out on the wind golf course, you know, just being able to be on the wind. I ended up, I think I was talking to like the president of the wind. There was some uh -huh. huge executive. I don't know. It was like the next day, but I was like, I can't believe you guys let me have a scratch session on the wind golf course with yeah. the sphere behind me. Like that's something I didn't think would be legal in the, you know, in the yeah. golf world or yeah. in the Las Vegas, you know, sort of uptight, uh, Wear yeah. a shirt world. Yeah. Uh, now, when is like a super expensive oh course God. to it's, play? It's like 800 bucks or some shit. Right. It's like the most but expensive like, and kind of not uptight, yeah. but like it is, you know, you probably yeah. have to wear certain stuff and it's yeah. 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 Certain courses. Like I just got invited to like, I'm going to playing in Tampa oh, this dope. Saturday. I'm not sure when this is airing, but after that, I'm going to play some like super exclusive private things. And they sent me this whole list of like, what I could wear, where I could wear it, all this shit. Wow. That's wow. crazy. Yeah. Normally I'd be like, fuck that shit, but this is like some fly ass I shit know. that I'm going to do. No, you um, might as well. And no, then you but can it's bring like, your own style to that, if you're which in is dope. It, yeah. When you're in it, like, you know, it's dope. Yeah, of course. But like, 
Yeah. But I know I was at Ojai Valley Inn and just tried to do the free driving range, right. and they wouldn't let my son come in because he didn't have a collared shirt. And I'm like, yo, he's like seven. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's a yeah, t-shirt. That type of shit's and I had to go buy him like a hundred dollar yeah. shirt <laughs> yeah. to put on. But like, what you got to experience on at that tournament in terms of like being that was insane. Like DJing on a course and like all the shits going on. Like that's like the new generation of golf. Like this whole movement that I'm a part of is yes. like bringing fun shit to I golf. I love it. You know, like I did my my album release party was a uh, a golf tournament at the course at Top Golf because I work really close with Top Golf as well. Which was it the El Segundo one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, so, so it's that course right next to yeah, it. Yeah. I was so, always wondering what goes yeah, on, but it was dope. Like they have speakers throughout the whole course. I'm like playing oh. the album. Oh, that's so other cool. Songs. I I invited like it was like half music industry people, yeah. half like dope golf industry people. Oh, that's amazing. Like alcohol sponsors food sponsors it was just like the dopest time you know like yeah. that's like the energy i love um, that yeah but it's true like all you know we're in our 40s like well i don't know about you but i think you are <laughs> Yo, chill, dude. shut the fuck up <laughs> but i'm just saying everyone in our you know even people in the 30s whatever but like i'm just saying people are younger people are getting into golf and golf has always been such a gate gate kept sport yeah. you know of older people that are like screw all these younger people they're yeah. annoying a, you have to wear a shirt you're yeah. ruining the sport stop making a sound you know what i mean D you know like we're gonna drink out of our little vodka bottle not like smoke a blunt on the course yeah. when it's like come on like this thing they had marshawn lynch on the course smoking yeah. what was maybe a blunt or maybe not but definitely you know a <laughs> definitely a blunt <laughs> they were like it was funny because the whole thing started and i mean this shit was it was netflix's first live sports broadcast yeah. almost live bro first live broadcast ever right so much planning went into it like i said i went to the rehearsal the next day i was on the course all day right. they were testing these high speed drones that go insane to follow right. them because it wasn't normal golf like it was the f1 yeah. drivers from drive to survive the pga yeah. golfers from full swing working together to hit the ball as fast as they could and then drive the car yeah, as that, fast as they that could whole, is that the hole where you were I was on the third and fifth hole yeah. and it was not, it was eight or nine holes, I right. think. So, um, but they, so they did that in all of them, I guess, yeah. but like they needed them to follow them. And then there was parts where like the mic was going out and then like a protester yeah. ran on the course and like they Bert Kreischer grabbed her and tackled her. And like Mark Wahlberg was like, Hey bro, you don't need to be security. Like he's on the mic, like yeah. crazy shit's happening. And they're telling me I'm in the third hole waiting for them to come. So I'm just DJing to whatever I have like probably <laughs> over a thousand people like in my area, but throughout the course is probably thousands of people. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, Oh yeah, this just happened. This just happened. And they're like, the only person who's like super chill is like Marshawn Lynch. Like he's smoking something and talking to everybody. I'm like, he's the coolest guy ever. Yeah. And I had prepared a whole set for him of like Bay area shit, but he never ended up coming to my area. Right. So, um, but I even found like to talk about the music, like while I was saying, I asked them to license your song was that I was allowed to play whatever I wanted until the drivers and the golfers came to the third hole. Right. I had to play music they licensed and it came down to the last second. So like up to it, they're like, we're going to license you eight songs. And like, we're going to license you five songs. We're going to license you two songs. And then Monday when we're rehearsing, we still didn't know. And we're filming it 1 PM Tuesday. And then finally later Monday night, they go, okay, we've got you Doja cat Vegas that. And I'm like, that's it. And they're like, yeah, they're like, use all these Netflix pre cleared, songs and they gave me this access to like this background service yeah. but there was i think oh, over 1.8 million songs so i'm like how am i supposed to sift through this so yeah i had to like you could like do these pitch requests to these library people that know yeah. their thing and so i literally sent them a list of songs that i want stuff to sound like and then was like send me songs about like winning swinging hitting hole in ones bullseyes right. you know like anything so i just got stuff like that and i got found like some song that sounded like a bay area song about like you know driving too fast and then yeah. like i would just cut that up and yeah. have that ready for marshawn lynch or whoever to come yeah, by that reminds me of the master of the mix nightmare yeah i'm sure i mean like clearing songs and nowadays i feel like it's way easier but back then it was even crazier yeah. to have a dj on camera because they didn't know what yeah. to do like what and did you guys it do? it was a nightmare like because they <laughs> they barely fucking knew what they had access i know to. so like that was like the first dj yeah. show ever I, re really. I remember like 
going into it before we went to film, like practicing all these routines of like, this is my shit. This is what right. I'm going to do. And we get there and they're like, nah, you can't do any of that because you could only use these songs from this library. It's crazy. So it like, and then when we'd come down to challenges for certain things, it was just like everyone was using the same shit because there's only like certain songs that were like the dopest shit in right. each category. And even like one episode, like after we filmed, they were like, yo, your whole routine, like we could use none of it. What? So they, they hit me up, but I knew I went, I won at this point. So I was like, damn, that's going to be whack as fuck. But at, at deep down, I'm like, whatever, bro. I fucking won that shit. But they, <laughs> but they hit me up and they had me try and like redo. They sent me like five songs. They're like, all right, make a routine out of these to match me actually doing some other shit. That's how much they don't understand DJing. And right? then and I remember <laughs> people I, doing a DJ. I show. like tried, but obviously that's literally impossible. It's impossible. Especially if you're doing cuts and like right. all this different shit. And uh, I remember it aired and like people are on Twitter like, like, yo, what happened to JCO? Like that shit was weird as hell. Like, <laughs> and I was like, I want to say shit, but deep down I'm just sitting there. You're just like, I won. I don't like, care. It's fine. Yeah. Out, yeah. I mean, you won like 250,000, right? Yeah, man. That's dope. Crazy. Nice little start. <laughs> Change my life. <laughs> to whatever you uh, want to do. <laughs> fucking hell yeah, bro. Oh, that's that was, amazing. It that was amazing. And you got dope gear and stuff from it, right? Yeah, I got a bunch of equipment and just, like, exposure, like, from that. I right. started, like, getting Vegas residencies and just touring even more on the club circuit. Right. And then I just, like, realized I wanted to do more, like, shows and, like, festivals. So, you know, I was able to turn down just, like, the everyday club gig to get yeah. by to focus on, like, producing, you know. And took a couple years of, like, putting out remakes or originals and this and that for, like, the artist producer world, but all right, this dude's legit, you know yeah. what I mean? And then, you know, right. The ups and downs of that over the last decade. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You never know what we're going to get hit with. You know what I mean? It's like you were killing it. You developed this whole thing. And then, yeah, the pandemic hits and everything, yeah. everything changes. Um, something that happened during the pandemic was you starting a pizza shop, right? With That's your brother, right. Chef Osh. Amazing chef who was also a chef at Nobu and Mama Shelter and yep. dope places. He's yep. also a cool dude like you and a good <laughs> person and, you know, into all the same stuff. But um, you guys created this amazing place that has, like, incredible food, yes. dope branding, logo. Like, everything about it is just, like, really cool and also speaks to, I think, genuinely who you are right yeah. another thing another project that yeah it's, you do. it's been pretty wild um yeah me and my brother opened up gorilla pies yeah gorilla it's pies. like an artisan pizza wings apps salads like all types of stuff like you said my brother is an insanely you know credited chef you know at all yeah. these crazy restaurants and yeah just during the pandemic everything froze and he didn't have a job so he just started making pizza right and we just you know, kind of popped off out of there yeah. and just found this restaurant that was going out of business, bought them out. And we we're just like, let's give it a shot. And it's been like going great. People love it. Amazing. You know, the press is crazy. You know, yeah. people love the brand, but like, you know, as you know, you have family with restaurants, like the re yeah. that's a whole crate that all the stuff that goes into running a restaurant is just like a crazy thing that I'd never thought I'd be thrown into. You right. Know? Yeah. I don't know probably even as much as you do. Like I see it from my family too. And right. I've, I see how it's like, it's just like DJs like, well, we're like, okay, if I'm going to go do these gigs and my costs are this much, yeah. like it's way crazier than that. You know, what I mean? like the margins crazier. are so thin and you're spending yeah. all the money just to try to make back some money. And yeah. you're almost like, it's a battle. I mean, I don't know if I'm right, but a battle of like making the really good food and making money off the restaurant, but also building the brand. So at least yeah. that could be your equity involved in it. Right. And it can yeah. keep growing like that. And people want to yeah. invest in it or you can open new places because you can't always, even if someone has a restaurant with a line down the block and everybody's like, you're killing it. It's not always making that much money. It's just yeah. getting a lot of business because yeah. you're using amazing ingredients. Like if yeah. you use shitty stuff, then yeah, probably like you could. our stuff, like labor costs, ingredients, just yeah. like everything that goes into making a high quality product, you know, costs money. And just like, you know, just from ingredients to labor and all that is right. just like, even for our, this first one is like a pretty mom and pop hole in the wall kind of spot, but just still yeah. like those margins are crazy. And, um, it's just right. wild. And you're in LA. I yeah. Mean, rent is probably nuts. It's actually not know. that bad where we're at. Really? Like, that's, that's also good. kind of an issue to me. I think like, I'd like to be in a much more central location. Because you guys are in like 
Bur- not Burbank, North Hollywood, Valley Studio Village. City, Valley Village, Valley Village, Valley Village, technically, but right. it's like kind but of LA is so hard yeah. with the walking. Pizza stuff is good with walking. Uh, yeah, like traffic, we need to be right? in a little retail zone, you know, a place where there's businesses, like where lunch pops off and right. it's like nightlife and just like more of an energy. Like it's a real residential area and it's like a lot of Orthodox Jewish people that can't even eat our food because <laughs> oh, we're not kosher. So it's like, it's kind of like a, you know, a diamond in the rough. You got to, it's kind of like a destination spot, but it's like, I want to be super accessible. Like, yeah, you know, right down the street from here, like, big pizza parlor sports bar with a beer garden and like games and just like create a whole kind so of dope. like spot around that, which is what I'm building to right now. We're like nice. working on like, you know, investor decks and business plans and all this shit, but it's just so much goes into it. You know, it's right. just like, we got the food part is covered. The food is fire. The branding. Is yeah. It's like point. the food, like you're, it's like how you are going to a DJ set. Like, you know, you're going to smash yeah. it when the DJ yeah. set, you know, you're going to smash it if yeah. somebody comes to eat there, but it all just comes down to like operations and just like yeah. managing humans, and just <laughs> like all the little things like that, that it's just like, I'm trying to get to a place where my brother could just be a rock star chef yeah. and I could just kill the branding stuff and bring yeah. all these extra things I bring to the table and someone else who's like really like a restaurant person who's taken cool ideas and exploded them to come in and just like crack the whip and just get our shit ready. So yeah, we can open more locations and, you know, just really take shit over. You know? Right. But, you know, we're in a pretty good spot. You know, it's, it's tough. It's a lot harder on my brother cause he's like in the thick of it, you know, where right. I'm like, I'm not like in the shop. I'm not dealing with the numbers like directly, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm just like inviting dope people and setting up like cool, you know, right. promo stuff and just like bringing a lot of value like that. But just like the nuts and bolts of like day to day operations, like I, I'll go insane. I'm already right. going crazy enough. My fucking DJ career. <laughs> like, well, yeah, in a way you're building that on your DJ side, which then can help on that other side. Yeah. And he's building that on his chef side, which yeah. then can help. So it's like, hopefully yeah. it all, I mean, just the fact that this together. far down the line, like the DJ brother and the chef brother are actually having yeah. a fucking business together. So it's pretty cool. I love you it. Know? But I just want to, you know, we're right on track, but just like once we get to that point where it's like really turning over and generating like, yeah. Good amount of income is going to be fucking sick. Yeah. So that's great. It's, uh, but it's so fun. It's just the fact that I could like say like, Hey, I own a restaurant. It's really good. And people are like, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll see. And then they come and they're like, what the fuck? This I is know. so good. Like right. everyone who comes in is just like, I know it's away. funny. They definitely doubt you. I took out, there were some DJs last week, like Edwin Phenom from uh, yeah. DJ city was like, Oh, these persons in town from Madrid and some other guys, you know, and, uh, we should go to dinner. And I was like, oh, we can go to one of my sister's spots. And they're like, okay, cool. But I'm, and I don't think they realized how good it was going to be. Yeah. You know, like we went and they were like, this is the best, you know, ever. Yeah. I'm like, I told you guys yeah. it's going to be good. Like, bro, we do top we, tier We do shit. top tier music, food, whatever it is. Everything we do. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, honestly, that's, that's how we've all, that's the longevity. Yeah, that's how we're still and here. The consistency in the game is. Yeah utilizing the best ingredients and collaborating with the best people and yeah. knowing when to get in and out of things the right times yeah. and you know just putting all your top yeah like quality effort into these projects yeah. you know no matter what the hell it yeah, is whatever you know? it is yeah yeah so and and that's why like when you were you know building jco as the dubstep trap dj like yeah you did so well on that, yeah. you know, and whatever you've yeah. put your mind to, I you put, know. Yeah. Anything I'm like, have my mindset on, I just yeah. work my ass off until it happens, you know? So yeah. like most things I've been able to achieve, you know, however, sometimes it's like yeah. a couple of years or it might be a fucking decade till right. something happens, but it's just like, yeah, just maintaining that passion to like keep doing it, you know, just like, just like you, like, yeah, we're still as hype about DJ shit as we were when we met like 20 years. I ago. know. It's funny. I'll run you into know? people and like, Oh, you're still doing that. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, honestly, the things I've done this year alone, this month I've never done before. Yeah. It's always new. Like yeah. I have a new challenge nonstop, which is so much fun, you know? And yeah. as long as you don't shy yeah. away from that stuff, yeah, you know, I mean, it's our like, cause like me and you, we kind of like spread our shit around different things, yes. you know, different areas of DJing and music and just business. So it's like, yep. we won't get as burnt out than like just the, you know, the resident DJ at a local club that's at the same spot every week. Like totally. if, if I was doing that, it'd, it's a much, you know, like it, it's yeah. hard to stay fun and like stay new and fresh. But like, yeah. if you push yourself to get in all these different areas, you know, like 
you know, because me, I'm dude, I'll go from DJing like a crazy EDM festival to like a dope ass open format club to like a fucking you know, PGA 2K global launch party to like right. a fucking underground warehouse rave at yeah. 5 a.m. It's like, they're <laughs> all so different. And like, if you're like, do your shit and have your things together, like you could crush all those types of things. Yeah. You know? But it's are like, you like using Serato at all that kind of stuff? Or do you go back and forth? From, I mean, you know, USB I'm sticks. I'm definitely just kind of like falling into the USB zone just because it's so fucking easy and freeing right. to like just not. But if you have to do like, let's say those four gigs, you know, for all of them, you would use yeah. just a USB at every single one. Yeah. But, but, but in those instances, like the preparation process is way more intense because like yeah. searching for music on USB. Yeah, I can just show up with this and be pretty confident. Yeah, that I can exactly. Do like that, that is definitely a lot of stress that's added on me, you know, pre-gig. But yeah. like while I'm at the gig, just like not even having a laptop to look at right. it. It's just like these it's like having real records almost. Yeah. Like, this is what I got. So. This is what I got. <laughs> you know, you know yeah. but it takes a lot more preparation for me to feel comfortable going into like different types of gigs like that. But, totally. But I also have been like thinking recently, just like, like I, maybe I should go back to Serato, just like with stems and all these new things. Like I'm kind of holding myself back from what I'm capable of as a DJ. Yeah. But like, it's just over the years, I just, you know, at first, you know, all the technical battle, fucking live mashup, tone play type shit was like so important in front forward. But now it's like, I feel like in most of these gigs, it's like over so many people's heads. Yeah. I'm just like, it's Sometimes I'm just like, I'm doing too much. I'm like, I dial it back and me just like playing. But now like I'll, when I do USBs, I'll do four decks, you know, have a mix on the front two or the middle yeah. and the outside I'll have like scratch sounds or loops just so like right. I can do my mixing shit. And it's nice to have like a whole other deck, you know, where in Toronto, it's like, if you just got two turntables, it's like, yeah, you blend something in, it's hard to have something to cut fucking two seconds later. It's you true. Know what I'm yeah, so there's pros know. and cons. It's but hard. Like, Stems is definitely fun and changes yeah. the game, but, but like, I don't yeah. know. You're right. But also just like certain types of gigs, I'm like, I'll like, you know, I'll, be like, I'll request CDJs on my rider and yeah. just like USB setup. And I'm like, if I had turntables in Serato, like I could really like flex right now. So I was like, I need to, I want to just like jump back into Serato and turntables a bit more just just because I know I can, you yeah. know, and just have it in the bag and just like have folders ready. So, right. you know, when the moment comes to like really, you know, put my Lay thing it on the down, table. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> the Cross 12s are dope too. Yeah. The new uh, Pioneer t- turntables that nice. control Serato. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. you can play vinyl and um, it controls Serato, but it's like the Rev 7, but it's a big 12 inch, you know? I, so. Yeah, I want to. They're, I they're dope. That. Yeah. But I at the same time, yeah. it's nice having the CDJs just for the, as the backup, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I did some big, this gig Tuesday and, you know, it was like some moments there were like, it would suck if my computer died or something happened, you know? Yeah. So like I have the USB with yeah, all the stuff ready to shit. go. Yeah. yeah. Just in case. Yeah. yeah. I just did. I don't know if you saw it. I did a whole like promo campaign with techniques. Um, um it, I don't know if I saw yeah, it. Yeah, I just, uh, I think it was like early last week. But oh, like okay. Techniques basically, um, they just launched some, like new, like in ear, like earbud things and some over ear, like noise cancellation headphones. Oh, and stuff. okay. I've seen a few yeah. people post about yeah. it, but no, I don't but know. But they're like trying to tap into the, uh, just like the golf lifestyle world. And they're like, yeah. Techniques reached out to my boy B, who's producing the whole thing. He's like, Do you know how many DJs do golf? He's like, Fucking definitely do. <laughs> I got the man and for you. And they hit me up and we shot like a whole like day in the life. Oh. Um, like they took me, like we went to Calabasas Country Club, shot a whole thing of like me golfing and just like Dope. how I like golf shit, then me in the studio, then me at Gorilla Pies, and they edited together. It's like, great. A dope little promo piece but it was just so cool because i growing up techniques just having techniques was like the dopest yeah. shit like just having that logo like right i remember so be I actually had, working with them I directly the first like record bags i had was like a techniques one with the logo and i remember like you know just walking around going like wherever i was just having that bag and like holding that logo out to be like 
Yeah, I'm fucking good yeah. with dog. You see, I know you oh, see I know. it, dog. I mean, AM had the techniques, you know, yeah. tattoo on his wrist. And yeah. it's iconic, especially for us growing up yeah. with that. And that was like yeah. our your goal was to get that turntable, you know, yeah. when you started out on the shitty ones. Yeah, so that's why I was like such a full circle moment that like – yeah, they're, they're hitting me up because they want to get in the golf space, and <laughs> I'm like, "What? Yeah, but it's tight, you know." And probably like eight years ago or whatever, like little did you know you'd be the DJ in the golf space or something. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's fucking wild. How did that even happen? Like, so Trappy Gilmore is your like alias? Well, it golf was. Name. I, I retired that a while. <laughs> okay, ago. okay. I still like saying it. Nah, that's a but, fun. That's a fun name. <laughs> you get sued by Adam Sandler. Now. Yeah. Well, my boy. I don't know if you've seen him. The black dude with dreads who does the one arm swing. Uh, he does this crazy like viral like super athletic i think i have seen it and it goes insanely far yeah so he's he's my boy and he calls himself snappy gilmore so like once oh. i saw him pop i was like i don't you could have the, the okay whole, anything appy gilmore <laughs> that's you any letter before appy nah but i just like with the golf stuff i just like kind of fell in love with golf about like eight years ago super casual like you know, it was just a hobby, whatever. Right. And then, um, yeah, I remember like you and Steve Wonder, Mr. Best and Lunatic, or whatever, probably go yeah. golf. And Steve and Best kind of fell off in the golf shit, but I they mean, need to come back. You know, Steve, come back, Steve. Where you at? Steve, did was Steve ever good? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, Steve, I love you. I'm, I'm gonna play the physics. Uh, <laughs> what about Ryan? He claims not, to be pretty. What not, about Mr. Best? He claims nah, to Mr. be good. Mr. Best is dope. Like, he could smack the shit out of the ball. He just needs to play more. Right. Okay. But, uh, I just yeah. did top golf. I've never golfed in my life. I, I did driving I, range lessons in uh, yeah. with my son, and we kind of like got good. And then yeah. I was just at that top golf, and we had fun. I, I had some pretty good moments, yeah, but I got to see that swing. It's, it's I not feel right. like you're kind of a little noodle army. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got okay, but definitely the feedback from the. Um, swing doctor or whatever he was called that was giving us the lessons okay. where my son was catching on way faster than i yeah. was <laughs> yeah get him hooked on that he's good yeah. he was really good but yeah. i did all right at top golf but no i'm not i, I would need to practice it's intimidating that's the thing i want to go golfing but all you guys or everybody knows what they're doing it's like what am i going to hold everyone back i need like a beginner's dj golf i mean day. steve's still there so <laughs> come on with steve all right i'm going to meet him <laughs> in you, vegas steve. tonight love you stevie hey steve what up <laughs> Bro. Nah, but with the golf stuff, you Steve know, would I, talk shit about us, so I think we're yeah, like <laughs> fucking scumbag. Just kidding. We love him. We love you, Wonder. Um, nah, but with the golf stuff, I just like kind of fell in love with golf, and then you know this brand, Malvin. Um, yeah, kind of just was taking form. Steve Malvin used to own Frank One Fifty One in New York. Such a, that's such a crazy thing that yeah. needs its own documentary. Yeah. And I, I mean, just I just started getting into golf, and I was like, oh shit, Malvin! Like I, I know him from like right. New York days, and I just hit him up. I was like, like Yo, crazy like, party, dope yeah. magazine you would get in New York. Yeah, and, him and, and I his used brother. to do those parties and stuff. Yeah, and then I was getting into golf. I saw he launched a brand. I was like, yo, what's up? Like I'm starting to golf. He's like, all right, come through. I did like a mixtape for them right when they were just kind of wow. starting to pop off. And this right. was like, you know, five, six years ago. And he's, that brand has just completely exploded. They're like a massive, they have like 50 stores in Korea. Like it's insane. Are you serious? Yeah. They're, I know they had that store on Fairfax and then it disappeared. Nah, they opened up uh, right near here in like Beverly Hills kinda, oh. on Melrose place. Amazing. Um, That's but, so dope yeah. to see. When I saw it coming out, I'm like, this is perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because no one is doing this. And it's the same way, even like Kith and stuff, I feel like. Like, it's almost like the streetwear stuff and all the stuff we liked, but for older people yeah. who have money and just, can spend it on things. Just classier, but, but still yeah, street. But it's you still know? cool and yeah. different and unique. And same with the golf thing. You don't want just the same old crap that yeah. their dads and grandpas yeah. are wearing and these uptight ass country club people. Yeah. It's like you want to make your own vibe and your yeah. own dope clothes and yeah. designs. But through like Malbin and like a bunch of other brands like Devereaux and other people I work with, like there's this whole renaissance of just like fashion and just like dope culture in the golf space. Right. And I'm like, while at the same time that's happening, like I'm doing all this, you know, DJ stuff and like cool with all these cool people making moves in the golf world. And I'm like, I want to like inject music and that, yeah. that energy and culture into the golf space. Right. And it's just been like so natural and easy. Cause like all my friends are like the dopest people in the golf world. So it's like, yeah. it's easy to be like, yo fucking let's do this and that and shoot this. And we got, you know, the dopest brand sanding his gear and just like everything's super official and organic. Cause like everyone involved is just like dope before golf. And now they're like, 
Yeah. You know, like Justin Elder is a pro pro skateboarder, was in Tony Hawk. Like he has this whole thing, like him and Jerron Wilson, you know, and just like I'm friends with like Jesus of golf, this dude who's like pro long driver dude who takes acid and is just like this crazy guy. And like <laughs> golf golf in your state, my boy, who like, you know, drives a van around the, the whole country and lives out of the van and films like golf documentaries. Oh it's just like all these people are just like doing dope different shit. And it's all based around just having fun with your friends and just like showing people that like golf is actually, it comes from like a traditional, like elitist space, but really it's just about you and a few friends just fucking vibing out yeah. and having fun and, uh, and still keeping it competitive. Cause like, you know, it's just, you know, it's fun. It's right. Fun. It's fun to beat your friends at things. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to be your friends. No, it's true. That's, that's so dope. And like also who decided it had to be so quiet, like every other sport, they're trying to make a free throw and hit a baseball and kick it's, a soccer ball and people, people are screaming yelling. in their yeah. face with like smoke and flags and like golf. Yeah. Everyone's like, quiet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's like, yeah. why can't you have music and like just have a different no, vibe? For but, a different... but now you can. You know, yeah. That's the whole thing. Like, that's great. I'm playing tournaments. There's music everywhere. They're giving out joints and drinks and shots right. everywhere. Like, like, why wouldn't a, it be like that? It's and just a it's just because party. of old people that were like trying to gatekeep it, you know, right? And now it's those people are dying off. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're, 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 we're, they're falling down one by one. <laughs> yeah. And then the, you know, because it's, it's just like that in a lot of industries too, even in, music stuff and booking and the people in charge of booking yeah. for even these corporate events, yeah. Amazon, Netflix, all that. It used to be like, Oh, it's some corporate person. Now it's someone cool. That's into I mean, stuff. Then they're yeah. making cool I mean, events. Think about it. It's kind of like every, every industry has like these like grandfathered in rules yep. from like a certain time. But like the world is so fucking different now. That's just yeah. like how things happen, how people absorb things, you know, how people react to just everyday life. You yeah. Know, a lot of it is not good, but, you know, it's the reality we're in. Right. And it's just like, this is the new world. And it's like these old fucking old fashioned rules just aren't going to cut yeah. it. And people are so outspoken these days and have a voice on whatever platforms that like you get called out from, for some shit. Like you could be a rap like that. So yeah. it's like, you know, a lot That's of people true. are treading differently and like accepting new things because if they don't, you're going to get called out. You know? Right. Yeah. Because also, I mean, not to delve too deep into that, I'm sure there's some racist uh, undertones with, I mean, country clubs oh, big it, have traditionally not let black people, Jewish people, like any people, right? Oh, like, yeah. And it was definitely the white person, like enclave, like there's, no other yeah, type of There's definitely like some race. places like that still. You know? Right. But it seems like that is dying out as yeah. well. Like, like Augusta. You know where the masters is was traditionally like only white people like only on occasion like they let a few like black golfers in like for the actual masters tournament right. but they're but they're initially i'm pretty sure they're like you could play in the tournament but you can't come to the players dinner you can't be in the clubhouse you can't do this or that it's like what the fuck like right you know like tiger woods like bro i just whooped all your asses like <laughs> i should be able to go wherever i want right you know what i'm saying yeah, literally, just because some, how someone looks, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So it's amazing to see all that stuff crumble, but also rebirth into just such a cool new vibe and movement yeah. and, and industry, but also massive industry that yeah. has a lot of money involved in yeah. it too, and brands, you know. Yeah, so I'm just trying to like kind of create a whole new lane for like DJing and music and events yeah, in, I love in that. that space, you know. Yeah. It's just like kind of an untapped thing that like, everyone in that space and all the brands have all these money and want to be cool, but they don't know how to be cool. Right. <laughs> so they are like, yeah, let me show you. Like, I think even the yeah. Netflix thing, they were like, Oh God. Cause it was like the PGA is involved and the F one is involved and the win is involved and the Netflix. And I think they were like the three brands besides Netflix are more of a, you know, buttoned up type of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And well, so then NASCAR when is pretty fl or F1. No, it's not NASCAR. Yeah. NASCAR. NASCAR is not buttoned up. Yeah. No, NASCAR is NASCAR just NASCAR like, just like let's drink Robbie Coors Robbie. Light, baby. But no, but I mean, F1, I think is no. pretty like no, it's some elite, buttoned up of yeah, tight elite. Yeah. I mean, think about it. to become an F1 driver. I can't imagine what your family has to be. You know, you probably yeah. come from a rich family or, or you're cabal, given dude. something. Gotta right? join the cabal. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Illuminati status. Yeah, I mean, I watched that Gran Turismo movie. It was pretty nuts. But, you know, and yeah. it shows, like, some of these drivers just come oh, yeah. from that world, you know. Yeah. And they've been doing it, like, since they were little kids and stuff. It's, like it's dope. It's like I, I love to see how yeah. you connected food, golf, DJing, 
music production, yeah. you know, just everything you love and in such a genuine way yeah. and how yeah. you've come out of the pandemic like that. You yeah, know what I mean? I'm just trying to like just be like a lifestyle brand versus just yeah. like Yeah. That's what it feels like. Here I'm JCO, here's some music. Okay, bye. Yeah. It's like you like you don't want to attach to that story. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I would just want to show people all these different sides of me that makes me relatable. Cause yeah. like, I'm just like really a fun loving guy who loves yeah. to f- fucking eat and play sports and like, exactly. You know, have a good time. That's you know? So dope. it's just like, that's what other people want to do. So it's like showing that side makes people want to follow you and your story, which will in turn make them want to, you know, listen to your music or come yeah. see you DJ or whatever. You right. Know? Yeah, exactly. Like that's what's needed to stand out nowadays too. Um, what about like, so, you know, we kind of discussed it earlier and I know you're changing how you're doing now, but I think it would be interesting for people to hear about like, cause most people that listen to our podcasts are open format DJs, right. you know, and it would be interesting to hear how you made the conscious decision to transition from an open format DJ to a, Right. Artist, you know, even right. though now you're saying you might do some other things and you're still evolving in that world. But yeah. what was that process like? I mean, for me, it was a very specific case because right. well, like wanna... I was saying, I want a quarter million dollars. So I was like, I know I that's had true. the luxury to not, you know, do the open format stuff to like rebrand and get my shit. That's true. And rebrand. But and in a way like... that still plays into people entering contests. The same with me. You know what I mean? I've been yeah. DJing 10 years. I entered a bunch of contests. I won some scion ones, nothing yeah. happened, but I won one of them, you know, yeah. next on the decks with yeah. Mark Bronson and that yeah. Yeah. helped launch me. And, but beyond me having you know, the financial freedom to focus on it, it just really was like years and years of really working at it. Right. To like, become good you know yeah what i'm saying like a lot because a lot of you know you know yeah, sorry <laughs> we got an elephant in here guys you hear it? it's like Rrr. a lot of you know <laughs> a lot of open format djs would love to, you know to become like touring artists and play festivals yeah, exactly but like the amount of like time of sucking to get <laughs> to that point it's yeah. like it's really hard man and, and to make hard decisions i remember talking to you and you're like i'm not going to do these open format gigs even though i could like yeah. i could make a thousand dollars tonight or two thousand yeah. dollars yeah, yeah. or more or yeah. you know what i mean yeah. but i'm not going to do it because i don't want to get pigeonholed into that mode right. you know but i think like that was at that time like people were a lot more protective no on that. it was the right thing to do but at that I, time for i sure. think now like people are just like anything goes there's kind of right. It's kind of wild, wild west. There's no rules like post pandemic. It's just like, yo, do whatever the fuck you can yeah. to have fun and make money. And like, that's what you should do. You know, like, right. So and nowadays, yeah. instead of the contests, you do have the viral videos and the kind of things that can yeah. help people in different yeah. ways. I mean, obviously you got to, you know, make all this content, which is annoying <laughs> as hell. Yeah. And it's like, some of it's fun to make, but just like, you know, that constant battle of like, what are my social media numbers? Like, that's a necessary evil that i fucking hate and loathe <laughs> yeah. but i mean it's like we have no choice but you know i mean but the biggest thing if you want to you know be a respected artist and like touring artists like you got to put in the work and make yeah. a ton of fucking songs to a point where other artists are like wow this is a really good song and then once you're viewed as that in that world and you start getting you know pl- your songs played by other like big artists yeah and then that leads into like potential bookings and support slots and then you know it's just like every you know just being an open format dj it's kind yeah. of the same thing but just a new world you know right. it's like the same hustle but different you know yeah. what i'm saying it's like and putting it in doing a lot of production work and collaborating with people and, yeah and and not being afraid of rejection in a way just yeah. like putting stuff out it yeah. won't always get the response yeah. you think it i will. feel like it like the first couple of years where i really focused on it like i put out like 40 fucking songs like remixes and originals right. and like no one gave a fuck and then like, right i remember at a certain point like one super big artist was like yo like i found this thing and i'm playing every set i'm like oh shit yeah, I'm just like okay, I'm I'm in, you know. And yeah. Once you have one cosign like that, it's just like kind of snowballs, true. you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good point, and and it's just a matter. Of, yeah, it's just being as consistent because that's the thing we put in so much time of learning to scratch and, yeah. and putting t- together these sets, you know, yeah. for the open format thing. Yeah. So it's, it's the same. It's thing It's weird just having to start over, you know. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you could be, you know, have your residencies and be making however many thousand dollars a month with your consistent shit and be like, all right, I'm going to be an artist. But like, okay, you're having one show a month for five to a hundred dollars. Like yeah. have fun with that. Right. You know, like to be able to mentally t- 
go to that place to be able to build back up to something that could True. be bigger than where you were at. It's like, it's, it's tough, man. Yeah. It it's takes, a lot of risks. Takes, and it's believing. so much risk. And like, like, I'll be honest, like if I didn't win all that money on the show, I probably wouldn't have done that. Like, yeah. you know, I wouldn't, Right. I would have been too scared. It's fucking scary. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I'm especially still, I'm when we have scared. guaranteed money every weekend. You exactly. Know? Like it's tough. Like, and I, I still, you know, freak out about it, even though like I've had yeah. X, Y, and Z success, but it's just like relentless because right. as an artist, it's like, you got to stay so relevant. Whereas if you're a good DJ and do a good job, like you could play, you know, X, Y, and Z spots yeah. and all they need is a good DJ. They're not looking for someone to like, make it you know about them and like a whole show out of it. right it's like you or just come in come into the room like play the vibe of the room kill it and like you'll get hired yeah you know what i'm saying it's just it's a different ball game but you know obviously there's a lot of similarities just in terms of the grind and persistence you need to have to like break through yeah know? that's true and learning like like you were saying to work with different teams and then knowing when okay i'm gonna do my own thing or i don't need this part yeah. of the team going or whatever yeah it's a it's a lot of you know just like experience and just like feeling failures and feeling successes and be like all right this is what i need to do to reach this feeling again and yeah this is what i need to not do so i never fucking <laughs> deal with whatever that was you know? right right so you know it's growing pains yeah any uh crazy like tour stories you want to tell or something or i mean I there's a lot <laughs> i know you have five million of them but like that stand out or any i don't know stuff with red man or stuff when you were touring uh with the dubstep stuff i got well, i guess we could talk about getting arrested in china definitely let's talk about that <laughs> <laughs> because what the hell i don't think i heard that you don't know about this <laughs> i don't know do oh. i oh fuck, dude so I'm booked to play EDC China. Okay. Fucking amazing, right? Yeah, incredible. Gonna be the best. When is this? Gonna be the best thing ever. This is probably like 2018. Okay. 2018-ish. So I'm like, all right, I'm playing EDC in Shanghai. Like, what right. could be what could be better? You yeah. Know, it's the top incredible. of the world. Incredible. So I fly out there. I was kind of added to the to the festival kind of last minute. Um, so I get out there and they're like, yeah. You're gonna be good. Like we got you this visa. And I'm just like, all right, you know, like I'm assuming everything's paperwork's right. fine, everything's fine. Um, so I get there. I think the first day of the festival, I didn't play. So I was just hanging out, partying, just having a blast. Like, oh, we're, yeah. we're, we're all in China. It's like all my boys, all these artists from from all over the world. And then the next day, I think it was Saturday. It was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday festival. Yeah, it was my set. So. I had a kind of early set on circuit grounds, which is like a great fucking stage. So I'm like, whatever, but I'm, you know, I'm still coming up. So I'm not like worried about like, Oh, when's my set? This and that. I'm just happy, yeah. to, happy to be there. Of course. So I start, start my set fucking two songs in. I get a message from my like liaison from China. Like, yo, police are walking around looking for people to make sure they, they have the right permit. They're like, you don't have the right permit. And I'm like, what? I'm like, Start freaking out. I'm like, all right, got to transition. In the, in the and beginning of your three, set? Three songs in. And then, <laughs> what? And then, uh, then, you know, I'm like, oh shit. And then I play a couple songs, look at my phone. He's like, he's like, hide your passport. I'm like, what? I'm like, what the fuck? Hide I'm your passport where? And I'm literally. Also, you're in China. You're not like. And I'm literally freaking Denver. the fuck out. <laughs> He's like, hide your passport. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, bro, where are you? Like, come here. Like it's probably come the here. scariest country and then to have that happen. A few more songs later, fucking my buddy A Train, you know. Oh, yeah, of course. He was in China randomly. He, he was there with me behind me on stage. And he was like, he taps me on that. He's like, yo, uh, there's police over here looking for your name on some list. And they're like, oh, I was going to say, why would they even know to come to you on stage and not wait? So, basi so basically. Okay, sorry. You tell, yeah. tell the story. <laughs> yeah. So, the, so he's like, they're looking for your name on this list. So alleged, apparently, like somewhere, I don't know if it's on the China side or the U.S. side, was trying to like get over on a bunch of like last minute permits because like oh for God. like the different level of permit for like a festival performance versus a club, like something different. Oh wow! So basically, at this point, I know that I'm not, don't have the right paperwork, and that. People are going around to stages just trying to find people like from lighting guys to dancers to like all types of shit to DJs. And then A-Train's like, yo, 
they're looking for your name on this list. I'm like, dude, my name's not on the fucking list. I'm like, don't say shit. Don't say shit. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm literally like texting every transition, texting my, my dude in China, the dude on the ground who like booked me essentially was like my China guy. He's like, yeah, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, just don't say shit. Like saying all this shit. I'm like, oh what do you God. mean? And I'm like, fucking, yeah. you know? So freaking the f complete freak out. Cause and also then, what are you going to go back and get on a plane? Okay. Keep going. So, so, so then I finished my set and like the police are like over on this side of stage. I finished my set and I'm just like, I like tuck my passport, like deep in my DJ bag. Cause I'm not going to like leave my passport on some random place in China. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, um, then I like take my hat off and like try and like look a little different and like walk out. Look at <laughs> To, to just leave like put this, a fake beard on. Just put the to leave that that area to right. to get back to the artist co compound, and then the the cop is just like sitting at the exit, and they fucking recognize me obviously because I'm like a fucking six three big ass white dude in China like <laughs> yeah not many I don't think you're hiding not many people well. that that uh you know that look like me there holy shit so then they stop me and ask me all the shit and like you know. I think I still have my passport tucked at this point. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, I don't have my passport, like trying to play that game. And they're like, yeah, like you're not on this list. They're like, all right, you're going to have to come with us. So then I get escorted by like two police officers. It might've just been one police officer and like a random per and a translator with me and like someone from the festival. So they're like, all right, come with us. I'm like, I don't know where the fuck I'm going. So I'm like being marched through the fest EDC China to, I don't know where, and they're just following. So I'm what? following him like through the crowd, right? Wow. And then the so I'm with the translator and like the cops like right in front of me over here. And he drops back to me. He's like, yo, if you could run, run. And I was like, what dude? Who said that? The, they're like, I don't know if it's the translator or like someone from like the thing. And I'm like, yo, what? A hey, would you run? How do exactly. you get on a plane? A, I'm six three and white. And you in, have to check in China. At the airport. I mean, yeah, you're But huge. beyond that, just like getting hiding anywhere. Like I'm a I'm a big ass dude. A, B, I'm not necessarily the fastest dude in the world. That's also starting an extra and, level of shit and, with that. Yeah, and see, I'm just like, what? I'm like, shit, you're out of your mind. I was like, I'm not running. Right. So then I keep walking. They put me in a police car. It's not like you wouldn't have got the yeah. permit if you knew what it was. They put me in a police car, fucking <laughs> oh my God. drive me 30 minutes. To some random police station in who the fuck knows where. Oh and I'm like sitting there for like a couple hours. They weren't like, I wasn't like handcuffed or anything. Cause it was like a, some paperwork shit. It yeah. wasn't like criminal, but I'm like sitting in this police station for like a couple hours, but they were like, let me be on my phone. Like give me waters. Okay. So like, it wasn't like I was like in the, yeah. in the, in the jail cell. And then, then after like two hours that they bring me to this other room and there's like all this whole room of people who didn't have the same paperwork and got caught. God. And then after hours of that, they take me outside and they're like, all right, should be good to go. And I'm like, oh, thank God. They're like, we just got to do one more thing. We got to take you somewhere else. They take me 30 minutes to even further different, shadier Chinese fucking police station. And like, I'm sitting there for like two hours. And then they're finally they're like, all right, you know, it looks like this isn't your fault. Like it's some issue with like the promoters and the Chinese government. Like we'll deal with it with them. Like you're good to go. And I'm just like, Oh my God. Did I finally get let go. But it's, this was like literally the That's second, insane. the second I get off stage in EDC China is supposed to be like the greatest moment. I'm just like, all right, drinks, like this party. This right. was fucking awesome. And it was just like <laughs> the most hectic, crazy eight oh my hour God. experience. That's insane. So that's my tour story. <laughs> that's that's a good one. That's yeah. that's crazy. At least it didn't get worse, and at least you have all those people to like, you know, relate to. You know, that also yeah. Did I had it, a but, translator damn. at least with me the whole time. That's crazy. Yeah, I went to China once and had to get some super crazy visa, and I had to go downtown LA and wait forever and all. This Sounds stuff. a lot more chill than what. It was. <laughs> but I did. I, think all I did that. the right thing. I but. did all that stuff, <laughs> right. but it was just not the right visa. You know, oh my like God. I. It was wild. That's that's nuts. I wonder if I'm gonna get like kidnapped now because I heard like Chinese they be listening to this podcast. <laughs> they, they got some this sort is the of biggest track, podcast like, in China talks about China, but China, you know, like we're all good. I've been back. Yeah, you know, I, it's not it's not China's fault. Like it's they just. Uh, I'll, the, I'll check our China, stats. I don't think we have a huge China. Listener base. You're about your business. <laughs> You're about your paperwork. <laughs> the promoter fucked it up. And uh, I'll be back soon. See you guys there.
Um, <laughs> yeah, if you end up going to Asia next week, you <laughs> pop into China. Well, I might go to Japan, <laughs> but you know, just pop over to China. No, you know, I need some. I need a reparations booking in China oh for what I. Had to go That's <laughs> insane. Holy but shit! I never told you that. I don't know. I that does not ring a bell. Any I mean, that's it. definitely a story you remember. Yeah, that's but like crazy. still, still to this day, I'll see like some random people like yo, or I meet someone like you're, like you're the you're the guy that got arrested in China, huh? It's kind of like, a good yeah ending. They're like, like honestly, that like guy killed it so hard they nothing, arrested him. Like I didn't get in any trouble for it, and like as sucky as that was, like that story alone is like kind of worth it. It is kind of worth it. <laughs> like that's a pretty sick. That's story. amazing. Because, well, you would have just had a drink after and just hung out. So. I mean, <laughs> more than one. Let's, <laughs> yes. let's be honest here. Yo, that's crazy. Um, are there any other, like, projects? I mean, we've talked about so many, but any yeah. other things you're working on or so things many. that are on the way that so we should many, talk dude. about? So, you know, the Twilight Nine album, the remix album, that's all coming out within the next couple of weeks. Um, oh. I'm releasing a slew of, like, real DJ club-friendly, like, remixes. Oh, nice. And bootlegs. Like, I just did... Um, Bad Bunny, Mojave, Mojave Ghost. Nice. Me and B-Sides, Link Back Up. B-Sides, um, the man. Then we just did this crazy Erica Banks, like. Oh, yeah, I house, heard it last house night. Lip, like, dude, it's like any, everyone listening, try that in the club. That and the Bad Bunny, they're like pretty much undeniable club bangers. Yeah. If you're, in, if you're in that house zone. Um, and then I have a whole, a bunch of like real fun, like party kind of house tempo records that I'm going to be nice. uh, putting out. Um with the next couple months and then i have a side project with uh my homie g buck called uh yeah, g -Buck, called so. uh new live crew yes <laughs> it's gonna be like some like miami bass meets house like just super fun like party records and then i have that story goes with new live crew uh, getting arrested right off stage <laughs> oh yeah i'm about to write a song about it. <laughs> that's dope is g buck out here now he just moved in my house he moved in your house yeah. okay because i saw a video of you guys and i thought i was like yeah. oh is he just out here visiting but nah yeah he moved I, in, he moved i thought in i read the, something that he lives here now yeah he moved in the crib a few months ago so we've been okay. cooking up a bunch of stuff he's from philly right he's from philly I feel like philly people are always comfortable in la there's a lot of them out here yeah <laughs> <laughs> they fit in well yeah. i don't know why so i got that um that's dope reviving thousand volts of red man yes. then i have another uh whole other side project group called pb and j with this uh crazy uh singer vocalist phil bedro who was featured on a couple songs on the album yeah, yeah. i kind of teased the pb and j thing but okay he's great he has an amazing voice and yeah. we got like a ep we're working on that's kind of like on some rufus to soul odessa vibes kind of very cool big vocal stuff and then probably going to produce an EP with Sammy Adams this year or with a bunch of other rappers um, and just some like record placement type of stuff. Just, you know, just That's amazing. You know. I mean, it's dope to see you're kind of approaching the music production thing out from the open format thing too. Cause you're hitting all the angles of the stuff yeah. you love and want to Cause I was out. like, you know, in that, you know, heavy bass pigeonhole and yeah. I'm just like, I'm not like that could do that. And I used to really enjoy it. And I still enjoy some of it, but I'm just like, I've done all this shit over my career and I'm like trying to humble myself to some 20 year old kid who thinks he's the shit. Cause he has like one heavy song and I'm just right. like, what am I doing here? I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I need to just go where I'm appreciated and where what I do is like really highly valued, you know? And that's yeah. just, that's just what I'm doing. And I think you've proven yourself in all those worlds. It's not like you have anything to prove there. Like right. you, you held your own and, and made dope shit and yeah. still do and still can. And, um, yeah. but it's, everything's an evolution otherwise you're yeah. bored it's like djing yeah. in the same that's club why, every like week. as i'm like you know doing all these different types of gigs now like when i'm like coming back into the edm circuit like it's it's at a whole new angle yeah than just like what i was at before which is you know it's harder to change people's no preconceived notions For of who sure. you are and what you do but i've been doing it my whole fucking life so like, yep. whatever it's just another one yeah <laughs> you know? yeah exactly just another kind of like time that you're going through with that you know yeah but i feel like this time it's like the most meaningful and will have the most longevity because it's all just organically me yeah without like trying to fit into anything so like anything i do i'm just like i did i made this like this because that's that's me and that's yeah. what i'm fucking with and yeah you know it's certain shit is super vibey and straight listening record and then i'm gonna have a fucking undeniable fucking club hit and then i'm gonna make some wild bass music Right. Fucking weird experimental shit. And I'm gonna drop an instrumental album. I'm gonna drop some shit with Red Man. <laughs> I'm gonna play some fucking golf and eat some pizza. You know I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's dope. And you got merch too. I saw you brought oh, in yeah. brought in a shirt. 
Can we show it on the YouTube? Yeah, let's do it. So this is available right now. Uh, JCO Twilight Nine capsule. Okay, let's see. Let's see. So Twilight Ooh. Nine was the name of the album. So we got the little. Oh, I love it. The J flag right there. You know, it's a oh, little, that's tight. You know, on the front, but the back. Oh, I love that. that. I'll wear that Twilight tonight. Nine album. <laughs> that's see, great. What's it say right? There? Dope artwork. Getting high, shooting low, baby. Getting high, shooting low. JCO. Yeah. So <laughs> that that picture is incredible. Yeah, Who did my, that? That's uh, this designer in Australia. It's really cool. So it's a uh, little. Golf caricature of me smoking weed. <laughs> got a boombox, got the golf club, you know. It's, it's all my shit. So I love it. This is for you. Thank you. And uh, I, I got uh, I got this. that shirt in uh, cream and a baby blue and hoodies with that same design. Great. Um, we'll put up the link when we drop this. So yeah. it's, it's on my Shopify, on my Instagram links. Uh, but you know, support a starving. Oh, I can't. I'm not starving. I'm at a pizza shop. But, uh, you know. <laughs> Definitely not starving. Yeah. Even if you starving gigs, is one thing. I am food. not. <laughs> um, but you know, being yes. going the artist route is a no, grind. But do, you're doing your yeah. own thing. Like you I really put, have your yeah. own team right now of yourself. Yeah, I, I put out. I put out this album independently. Paid for everything myself. Wow. Really, Super Seven Records. You know, all this merch is like out of pocket. You know, so like you know. Yeah. Not to mention, it's fucking fire. So <laughs> it is. It know, is. It's support. All fire. Support it. Bump the album. You know. Dope. Listen to it. Go eat at Gorilla Pies. Go play some golf. Do it all. There's and a, find them online yeah. at JCO. Um, yeah, go check out check out my SoundCloud for those new remixes for all the DJs out there. Okay. The Bad Bunny and the Erica Banks are like just club gold. Yeah. Um, and then I'm dropping the full remix album of the, the album stuff, which is, you know, all the songs, just more right. high energy club level And that's stuff. available everywhere, Spotify, um, all that. That will be. I've Two of the remixes are out. The third one comes out um, Friday. And then before the end of the year, the whole uh, remix album will be out. Okay. And, you know, I'm just going to be fucking throwing darts left and right, dude. Sounds like it. So <laughs> so just follow me, man. All the stuff will be on, you know. Yeah. All the officials will be on Beatport. All the, you know, all the remixes and edits and officials will be on DJ City. And, yeah. you know, and Beatport, the likes. Source, DJ on the City. likes anywhere you find good DJ music. Yeah. I'll be there. Uh, he will be right there, folks. We'll be right the fuck uh, there. With that's that amazing. Fire so, shit. Well, shit, I'm so glad we got to do this. My Thanks God. for coming through. Yeah. Great uh, episode and good catching up. And so crazy how much things can change in the course of what, two and a half, three years? <laughs> it feels like six months. It feel, right. It feels like six months mixed with 10 years. Yeah. It's like the weirdest. That's what the pandemic is. So weird. Did, so. so fucking it's weird. It's so cool to see that. But thanks but, for coming through. Here we are. And, uh, yeah. Go do all the stuff he said, people. Yeah. You're going to love all of it. Listen to it. Wear it. Eat it. Live listen it. Listen to it. Event. You need your own weed brand, too. That's your other. I'm um, sure that's coming. I've, <laughs> yeah, I've been getting a lot of free weed. <laughs> yeah. And doing some promo for weed brands. I'll but, take some. You know, maybe um, I'll do, right. uh, do my, you know, a little collab strain. I mean, my boys sounds are, like it fits my in. My boys over at Jeter. Shout out Jeter. Oh, yeah. They're uh, dope. They're like one of the top pre-roll brands. My buddy, uh, David Solano and his nice. whole crew. Like, I've seen that from... Cause he was a DJ and touring like we really David Solano was it doing like so familiar doing like house stuff like his brother and whole crew started the Life and Color festivals back in the day oh yeah and then like I remember they're like yo we're getting this weed shit like and it just started and like I feel like last year they did like two hundred million in sales or something so what? but I see it everywhere you. I mean yeah. and, and then they sponsor so many parties and they're in with so many of the right people yeah and their branding is crazy branding is so crazy and high quality um, products and yeah yeah all good that's amazing yeah I, I think I did. Literally the night before we all went inside for the pandemic, I did some party and they sponsored it and it was yeah. just like free joints everywhere. Yeah. But I remember nobody, it was kind of perfect because no one wanted to share anything. People didn't even know if they could shake yeah. hands. They got and, the little baby jeeters, little yeah. perfect size joints. Perfect yeah. for a golf course too. Yeah. <laughs> it's quick little boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, yo, great seeing yeah. you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having and, me. Uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Shout, um, check me out on all the platforms at yeah, J-A-Y-C-E-O-H. Okay. Support the music, play the music, you know. Much love to everyone involved, man. For Glad sure. To be here. All right. All right, peace. peace. All right, thank you to JCO for coming on the show. I'm so glad you got out of jail in China. And, uh, you know, it was a scary story that we heard there. That was crazy. Um, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time coming on and 
and telling us all of your stories and insights and everything. And uh, I only wish the best for you and success. Um, and thank you guys, the Beat Sorcerers, for listening. This podcast is available everywhere: Apple Music, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. You can listen, you can watch. Spread the word. Tell your friends keep listening we really appreciate it the 20 podcast is produced by beat source join us next week for more interviews as we discuss music that matters to djs i'm dj spider signing off 